Hi everyone, I'm the rum. And I'm the wine. We're wine and rum, a couple living here in Dublin, Ireland for the past four years. We make videos about what it's like living in Ireland, specifically Dublin, but also we share our tips and tricks about how we're able to live here as expats and have fun while doing it. So if you're interested in anything like that, please be sure to subscribe. And also watch our previous videos about living in Ireland and make sure to ring the notification bell so you'll actually see when we publish new videos. Yep. Every week. Every week. We try to. Every week. <laughs> we try. So like in many other countries of the world, or many capital cities, rents are quite high, which means you're probably living in a relatively small and cramped space. I know we were. We were living in a 29 square meter space, which is in square feet. Yeah, she's asking me because she's European, I'm from Barbados, she assumes that I know, you know, feet and other stuff, but you know, she's too special for feet, so it's just metric system, you know how it goes. But yeah, we'll put some sort of calculation there for exactly what it is. Yeah, so that's how tiny the apartment was that we used to live in for two and a half years. So we eventually figured out some hacks with how to make it into more livable space, even when you're working from home, unplanned, because there's a pandemic going on and you can't really go outside much anymore. So here are 19 hacks that we use to make our living space more livable. Yeah, and I think we were good at it. So, just some context about the flat. Of course, Dublin, like, you know, most places, the flats are not huge. And this one in particular seemed like it was designed for one person. How can we tell this? The size of the kitchen. The fact that two of us couldn't really fit in it at the same time. So yeah, it was a one bedroom. I almost said two because I've been looking at, you know. Side note, do you know in places like Austria, if there is a one bedroom flat is actually two rooms? Because for some reason, the living room magically transformed into another room. This, yes, this? it's... From what I understand, because I got confused about that too, I have friends looking for new flats, so I was constantly thinking they're looking for like two bedroom flats, when really they were just looking for one bedroom and one living room. But the reason is because the flats usually come unfurnished, so you could turn it into whatever room you please really, and that's why they're just talking about rooms, and not bedrooms apparently. Yes, speaking of furnishing, the apartment did come, like most apartments in Dublin, furnished. So, you know, usually you get some good furniture thrown in, some stuff that, luckily for us, nothing that looks like if it came from your grandmother's basement. Yes, I said your grandmother's basement because maybe your grandmother doesn't even want this in her house. That's how classic some, <laughs> you know, furniture looks. But in this case, furniture is all usable, blah, blah, blah. But it also means that from the layout, there's already a predefined layout that you must really adhere to. So one of the first things we did is that there were actually a few plates, cutlery, etc, uh, kettle, things like that that came with the apartment. They look really, really old though, like we wouldn't have felt comfortable using them even if... See, they... that, that's a really nice way to put it. <laughs> so what do we do with stuff you don't want? You put it in a cupboard so you don't need to see it until you leave. <laughs> Exactly, like we, we found stuff again at the back back of cupboards where we were like, all oh, right, this would have come with the flat if we had ever wanted to use it. But yeah, so we did that first of all. We tried to clear out everything we didn't want, either to the backs of cupboards or to the, the top. So we had like above counter shelving. And then on top of that, it was just space that was useless because no one can reach that. Except me. Yeah, sorry. I just had to put it in. She's not short, but, um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just might disagree with you on that. If I, let's put it that way. If we stand in a group of, like, high, early high school students, you probably wouldn't notice me because I would just go under in the average height of people. So, yeah, the, the kitchen was a challenge for me. So, the way we tried to solve that, because there was actually about half of the above counter kitchen cupboards I couldn't reach at all and even the ones the lower ones were a bit challenging to me so the what we did in the end is we had lots of containers 
love Ikea for that. <laughs> and also just random other plastic containers I got from, I don't even know where, my mom sending Christmas cookies, stuff like that. So we use these containers and especially the ones with the handles because you can just pull them out of the cupboard, take out whatever you need, put it back and it makes it much easier to clean up as well because everything's concentrated in a box, Everyone, everything has a box to go into and also if you have stuff like we had a lot of dry kidney beans or other lentils, things like that that tend to fall over and just use up so much space in the cupboard we organize them that way to just keep them flat and organized to make more space in the cupboards. Another thing we did, a bit too extreme in the beginning, is we tried to reduce the amount of plates that we had. So it, in the beginning we got two plates, which looking back was very stupid. The two of us, you know, what more can you need? <laughs> that was our logic until I killed the plate. So we bought one back and it killed another plate <laughs> so, and we were like, okay, may maybe let's get at least a few backups. Yeah, yeah, because the interesting thing when you first move, you're thinking, this is a small place. We never really thought of entertaining people, but then we had one guess and we're like, <laughs> oh, wow, we need more plates. But yeah, just as a little while was saying, what we really did is just try to keep the cutlery and all that sort of stuff down because pots are huge when they're in a, you know, in a small kitchen. And yeah, our idea was using, getting some pots and all that will be multi-purpose. We can cook all dishes we want. And I think we just had three pots that we could cook almost everything we wanted in. Yeah, and speaking of food, the other thing we did is we had a very structured shopping schedule. We probably would have done that anyway because we like to get organized like that and know exactly what to buy when we go to the shop so it doesn't take that much time. But it was also more essential to do that with the small kitchen to make sure we, and I know this is me calling myself out, especially during Alpenfest that little when I see stuff from home, I admit, is you have to remember how tiny your freezer space is because otherwise you'll be really disappointed when you get back home. So those were a few things we had to get practice that to know how much we could buy and how often we need to go shopping. Yeah, just one note in the freezer. Luckily we didn't have one of those, you know, really small fridge freezers that are like half height. It was a full one, not as full as, you know, we would like, but yeah, that did help that we only had to go shopping then, you know, once a week. Luckily we didn't, it wasn't small enough that every few days we will find ourselves in the shop. Next, we come to the bedroom. No, we're not going to make it stupid, this is where the magic happens, joke. But rather, this is where the sleep should happen. And one of the things that happens in the city is bright lights. So on the first thing, even though the place came with some blinds, we needed were some blackout curtains. You get blackout curtains, doesn't matter, sun shining, rain, sunrises, or Dublin, sunsets after 10pm in the height of summer, you can get your sleep. Um, the other thing is that it did come with cupboards built in. No buying your own cupboard. Sorry, Oosterreich. <laughs> but rather, what we had to do is that, you know, those were mostly shelving and some places where you would hang up your clothes. So what we had to do is kind of like retonder the whole situation <laughs> and have lots of our clothes folded in order to fit everywhere because there was not enough space to have a set of hangers and hang your clothes up. Of course, you have your overdoor hangers, you know, those ones that you might get at any place selling stuff. I don't want to just mention Ikea, but you know, we're in Europe, that's kind of where you go. And you just hang them over, you have your jackets, your clothes, whatever like that, your sleepwear, all there, ready for you to grab and jump into bed. So one of the things we really didn't like about the apartment at first is that it came with this coffee table that was just useless to us, to be honest because we weren't going to put a TV on it and it was very small and square and we couldn't find any real purpose for it until we realized we could put it in the hallway by the coat rack and ta-da, we've got ourselves a rucksack stand, a bag. Bag stand, let's place. call it a bag yeah, stand. Yeah, a bag stand. So we found it actually a real useful place to put it because underneath we put the shoes, we would have put it there anywhere so we weren't using up additional space. And on top we had a place to put all our bags, scarves, whatever would fall off the coat rack to catch that so it doesn't fall into the shoes. Yep, so you can just grab 
and head out the door. So since we're both experts and, well, I didn't travel as far as you did from Barbados <laughs> to get to Ireland, but I traveled with an equally big suitcase, let's put it that way. So we both have massive suitcases that we need to put somewhere and obviously in a very small apartment there's just no space to put them, like even the cupboards there was just no space at all. So we kind of half accidentally out of laziness I guess, half on purpose, started integrating them into like a not that useful piece of furniture. It's just like a tiny surface on top that you can use to put stuff on. So one went by the next door coffee table slash backstand thing. So on top of that we'd place like smaller items, like you can place a wallet or keys, you know, the kind of things you just want to grab quickly before you head out, or your mask for example in these days. And the other suitcase we also had in the hallway kind of more got stuff dropped on that you drop as you walk around and looking for a place to put it. But inside both suitcases the big thing is we'd push a lot of clothes. So for example we have clothes to go to Barbados that realistically we're not really wearing in Ireland that much. So they usually go in there and all kinds of other stuff that we don't use a lot and yeah, it just goes have in no our space. Long term storage. That's what we're calling the suitcase, at least what I did. <laughs> so the last big room that well the only other room that, other than the bathroom that we the had. The pretty much the biggest room in the house. The biggest, the most important room was the living room, which is where most the living in the flat, as the name says, did happen. This is where the magic happened. <laughs> <laughs> so the big thing we tried to do, we admit we weren't always good at it, but what we really tried to do was to try and keep the surface spaces clear, to pack away stuff that we didn't need. We didn't always do it, but every time we did, we were like, wow, we feel so much better. Our flat is suddenly grew by like half the size again. At least it feels that way. Of course, when most people imagine a living room, they think about a TV and a couch. We had one of those things. How I was thinking to maximize on space was that instead of, you know, buying a TV that we'd probably hardly look at anyway besides Netflix and YouTube, we would get a nice big widescreen monitor, throw that like a TV. Not only do we get to use it for play, we get to use it for work as well. With a nice desk, you know, where we chuck the coffee table out of its place and we put this desk, start that nice wide, put the TV, TV, the, the <laughs> monitor, throw that in like a TV. See how well it integrated the monitor with the TV, you know. Also, we don't have to pay TV licenses. If you don't have a TV, ching, more money saved. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> On a serious note, what we also had in this living room was window sills. Like, not the tiny window sills that you might put a plant on. We're talking about the lovely wide window sills that can fit an entire person. And when you can fit a person on a window sill, you take any extra pillows you have and make a nice, I don't even know what you call like it. Like a reading nook. That's what I was thinking. Then I realized sitting down there next to the window is a, quite a bit drafty most of the times for the year. But it's still like nice sit for a few minutes before you get too cold kind of place. Unless yeah. the sun is shining then it's yeah. very Yeah, when it's the rare toasty. Irish summer and it's nice and toasty we're like, yes, let's sit here for like 20 minutes. When it's a warm, warm, warm 25 degrees. 25 degrees? To... What kind of heat wave was that? <laughs> well, you're in Ireland. Do you remember? 25 degrees is a heat wave. If you're feeling higher than 28, tw sorry, 25 degrees, 26 degrees in Ireland, you know, last time it was that hot. If you take a move to Ireland, that's about the max temperature heat wave you're gonna get. Sorry, not sorry. Of course in Ireland, as I mentioned before, those summer nights can go on pretty long. But of course, as we have long summer nights, so too are the long winter nights. And one of the things we did with the living room is to make sure we gave it a different ambiance. So we got some cool hue lights so that whenever it was winter or summer, etc. that we could have some light and give a different vibe. Especially that also helped with the, you know, um, separation. Separation because especially during these um, pandemic times, you need a separation between your work and being at home. Some lights to change the ambiance really helps with that. 
And speaking of the separation between work and home, since the living room was also at the same time the office, we got very strict about putting away the work laptops or any other work related stuff at the end of the workday just to help our minds transition into okay, it's still the same room, but now it's evening time, fun time, we get to do what we want. We also integrated this into the living room space as well. Most of our stuff is nice, small and foldable. So in the blink of an eye, seriously about five minutes. Yeah, people are like that. <laughs> yeah, we can, you know, transform our living room without moving furniture or anything like that into a space where you can shoot these videos. Of course, speaking of videos, we have to talk about sound. Cause while we are okay for car moving by and forfeits are at that, in a YouTube video, we can stop a shoot again. You can't do it in real life when you're in your conference call with your boss or just trying to concentrate. So that's one of the things that really helps with the space is the noise cancelling headphones. So you don't hear the traffic outside. You don't hear the drunk person walking down the street at, you know, 11 p.m. on the way back from the pub or maybe to the pub. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, several other things. Ooh, construction. You're always going to hear construction in the apartment. So, noise guys and headphones, lifesaver hack. So, another thing since we were talking about the layout of the flat is that there was one very big item that came with the flat, which is a huge bookcase that almost stretched like a third of the shorter wall. So, we had to find a space to put it and also how to use it because there were just like three shelves that were very tall. We don't really have books that tall. Like, I don't know who has. I don't know what this shelf was meant to be used for. But what we ended up doing is we actually stored some of the kitchen stuff that didn't have space in the kitchen itself in there. And yes, I had some of my tea collection because I have way too much tea as well. So it's things like that that we stored there to try, even though it doesn't logically necessarily go there into the living room, just to free up more space into the kitchen where we really needed it. And also to free up space, another thing we did is, I don't know if this is a common thing because someone else actually told us they've seen it in another flat, but we realized that trash bags, or even if they're in a bin, take up quite a lot of space. So what we ended up doing is we actually use an IKEA laundry basket that's very, very slim and just push that against the wall for the recycling trash. And that worked out really well because it's also easy to move around without spilling anything. And another thing related to the laundry is more also because we had to, when we worked, still sit in, in the office or if we wanted to watch a movie without anything interrupting, we had to plan our laundry days very carefully. So we'd usually do it on a like weekend night to make sure we sleep in longer in the morning and it can take the night to dry so that it doesn't block us from walking around. Because there have been many times where we yeah, ran into realized. We need some context for what a clothes rack is. Because I'm from the Caribbean. Right. So, you know, I was like, how do you dry clothes? You know, I usually go outside and hang them out. But we had no balcony or something like that. And the dryer was fairly crap. So, and no Caribbean sun to like dry them in like how quickly? Uh, yeah, two or three hours and you're good. So, yeah. So, yeah, basically, that's the way I would say. Clothes rack, you know, put it in another room when we're not using it especially at night and you know that worked out nicely so we know it was a long video with lots of different tips but look this is just how it is there's a lot of stuff that you can actually do to make a small space more livable and the longer you live there the more you're gonna figure out these little hacks you know we hope for anyone you know living in a small space that you know some of these more unconventional <laughs> ideas of ours you can do because as you can see from you know some of our past videos and something like that you can't even tell that we were living in that smaller space so yeah don't be afraid to also move around your furniture it took us a few tries of trying out things in different positions every few months yeah bonus tip we forgot yeah moving around the furniture utilizing the space better always try and do it every few months you might just surprise yourself that you can make your place even more comfortable or at least feel like a different, like a new flat, get a bit of a new feeling to it. Yep. And with that, 
please do subscribe if you found any of these tips useful and of course look out for more videos check our playlists our links in the description you have lots of stuff there to help anybody who's thinking or already living here in Ireland have a more comfortable efficient and enjoyable life until next time see you later Bye. Bye.